Chris, speaking as an old neuroscientist who is perhaps out of date, uh, when I think about memory, I always fall back on, on my complete lack of, of sense of where the fundamental unit of memory is. Is it at the molecular level, at the, at the, at the, uh, in the synapse between neurons, very, very microscopic, or is it demand these vast circuitries in the brain between the front of the brain, back of the brain, reverberations, I mean, or, and, and anything in between. So what does neuroscience say about where is that core, that bit, that engram of memory? They're very good questions. I, I, I ask myself that all the time. I, I, I sort of go back to those old experiments by Lashley. Remember those? Oh, yeah. Those, uh, those very old experiments where yeah. he started cutting out pieces of yeah. yeah, and, and found that the memory was, was all over the brain and, right. and could be stored in many different places. Um, my, my take of, of, of the field is that memory is definitely have to have network networks that they aren't just sco stored in in one synapse it's definitely a network um, phenomenon um, but you know these networks can can maybe store parts of the memory in different places and and any given neuron would might be involved in innumerable different networks that's right because that's we, right. we have I mean uncountable memories we have uncountable net memories and you know it still blows me away that that some people can actually have this photographic memory yeah, right. I, I still i really don't understand that right, right. i don't understand how somebody can fly over a, a a city and memorize every little part of the city and then I, draw it out. and then draw it out i i i, I just but they can be autistic but they still do it yes that, that's right and and you know well not not every brain is Good at everything we, we, we would definitely one, know that but if one can do it that means it's it's a, it's a, it's a biological mechanism that's right that's it right has to be that's right there's no there's no that's alternative right. that's so right how could that happen i i i agree with you how <laughs> could that happen and i mean my view is that it, it obviously it has to be it has to be networks it can't just be held in one in, 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 in one synapse. It has to be networks. That's, that's my, my take of this. And so an in individual neuron might participate in thousands of different individual circuitry as it is, is part of one way, it'll fire one way, and another network will fire a different way. Is, is that that's, that's, how I would, that's how I would take it. That's how I think you can get the, um, the power to, to store that many, that, that much information. And the way our memories work, they're not exact. No, right. Well, mine's not exact. Sure, sure. Mine's far from exact. But some people have what I would consider very exact memories, and that's what blows me away. I, I can't quite figure that out, how a network could be so exact. Mm. Uh, so I'm still a bit confused, and, and I think it's a big question in neuroscience, exactly how memory does work. I think the way we learn is much clearer. Okay. I, I think that the way we learn is, is, you know, we can see the spines changing with... Um, the spines the, on the, the individual the, neurons, yes. the receptors. The, 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 the spines, you know, which, which form the synapses. And we can see those changing very fast. In learning. Uh, in, learning in, in, in learning processes. For instance, with drugs, we can see the, the, a, a set of spines changing in the striatum, which is, which is involved in the processing of, of the drugs. We can, we, can, we can see these spines changing. And what does that mean? If what does it, it mean? It, 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 it means you're strengthening some circuits okay. and you're weakening others. If okay. you have a lower number of spines, we're, we're assuming that we, we, we have a, a less connections with the neurons we have. If we have more spines, we have more connections. These are changing very fast. They're changing all the time. And I think that's how learning occurs. These long-term memories are much more difficult for me to understand and mm. to understand how you can get almost a photographic memory. That blows me away, I, I must say. <laughs> this is still one of my, this, this is still an area which still fascinates me immensely. And I, I, I still, I'm not satisfied with what's come through the literature to, to understand this. The, the ability of the brain to hold so much information. 
so why why is there a difference? I mean, to me, to have a single unit of memory is is awesome. How can a neuronal circuit be about about a memory? It's about circuitry. It's about uh, uh, re repetition. It's chemicals, but but that has to mean something. And so that, that that's a critical factor. What you're saying is that to have this vast amount in a photographic memory, as an example, mm -hmm. representing all of that in the brain is something that you find just awesome. Blows my mind, yeah. yes. It, it, it really does. I, I mean, I, I, I don't think we have enough single synapses just to explain memory on, on, on as, as a change in a single synapse, I, 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 we, we we can't we can't go there because it it it, it would make everything so susceptible. Everything's changing all the time. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. It, it makes much more sense to think of it as an, as networks, as opposed to you know singles memories held in single synapses. What's the implications of that in well, terms of? Uh, Stability of memory, reliability of memory, uh, well, redundancy we know, of memory. We know we know memories are not that reliable. Right. right. <laughs> I mean, Personally. Yeah. <laughs> and that they aren't that reliable. They they get distorted, and I think that tells you something. You know, the, the neurons have to have you know have other, um, and we have associations which bring back other memories, um, and you 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 tend to see something and you put it into a, an old mm. type of memory. Mm. I mean, we, we, we know we do this all the time. We, we make assumptions about people, we make assumptions based on these, on these memories. And um, in, in my area, memories, of course, are very, very important. In, in substance abuse, it's very, very important to our field because uh, and memories is basically the problem. You remember how, mm. how, how good the drug was. Mm. Uh, you remember that you've, you, you got out of your depression or you remember that it made you feel, feel like you want to feel. And that, that can be a big driver for the, um, for the rewarding circuitry.